Arthur Gareth von Unslen in Holy Cows, the ambiguities of being South African, boldly tackles South Africans' issues, the obvious elephants in the room, the myriad ethnic and race groups, cultural practices, sport and politics. He joins me now in the studio. Gareth, thank you very much for joining us here on Morning Love. Thanks very much for having me. A lot of the things that you talk about in the book are maybe things that pe people talk about in their close-knit circles, pe things that people discuss, uh, uncomfortable issues to talk in the public space. Why did you decide to pen a book on some of the really, really difficult things to swallow? Well, look, um, culture and the way in which it manifests uh, has always been a particular interest of mine, and there's few places that are richer for that kind of thing than South Africa. Mm. Uh, and flowing from that, there are a lot of subjects uh, in South African society that we don't talk about formally that much. We do, as you say, have informal discussions about these things, but they mm. don't seem to generate that much formal attention. Things like initiation practices, mm. um, the idea of respect and what it actually means. A lot of people use that word and demand it the whole time, but no one actually has a real conversation about what respect actually is and how mm. different people understand it. Um, polit politics, and there are also some stories in the book uh, which in and of themselves are... Uh, interesting, I think. This idea of, or this notion of holy cows, why, and, and, I, and I completely understand the perspective from the book, but there are things that we don't want to talk about, that we will not even engage, um, yes. that we won't even allow you to utter a sentence about. Yes, there are things like that, and, and, and one of the arguments I make in the book is that culture itself um, is, a, is a good example of that. I mean, we have, there are a lot of practices in South Africa. If we take initiation, which is one of the chapters mm. in the book, um, which is sort of protected by this uh, idea that gets advocated that you must respect my culture, is the idea that's put forward, which sort of shuts down debate, because what it's really saying is I'm not willing to have a critical conversation about any elements of those things that I practice or believe in, mm. um, and you, as an observer, are obliged to respect it regardless of what they are, even if it harms people or mm. it's anti-democratic or it's patriarchal. I'm not willing to have a discussion about it because uh, it's my culture and I'm very sensitive about it. But, you know, in, in many ways, how do we get around that conversation? Because if somebody, and we've heard it, we've heard it in public debates, we've heard um, politicians, when they mock each other, they, they talk about this thing that the one, you don't completely understand where I'm coming from, so therefore we can't engage each other on this platform yes. because you're coming from the south and I'm, I'm from the north. Yes. Well, uh, respect is a great example of this. It's one of, the, one of the essays in the book is on respect. And what I argue is that there are two fundamental understandings of respect that's never formally articulated. On the one hand, you have uh, a lot of people that res believe respect is something is due to you regardless of how you behave. Mm. It's based on certain things that you can't control, your age, your authority, the position you hold. And it doesn't matter what you do, the argument those people will put forward is that you, respect is due to you. And there are another group of people who believe respect is something that must be earned. So you must behave in a certain virtuous, upstanding way in, in order, order to, to get, get respect. Mm. And we have this conversation about respect, and people say to each other all the time, you must respect me, you must respect, you must respect that, but they mean two different things completely. It's talking past each other instead of to each other. One of the questions you ask is, uh, as a nation, why do we bend over backward to accommodate mediocrity, settling for which is only good enough? Have you found the answer? Um... Well, uh, there are various answers. I don't think there is one. There's a whole lot of different mm. forces that combine in South Africa to produce a general environment, uh, I believe, where mediocrity holds sway. Uh, some of them are political. Um, I think nationalism as an ideology lends itself towards mediocrity mm. because uh, it's essentially an egalitarian impulse. What it says is that um, the lowest common denominator should determine standards in a society. So mm. constantly you're reducing things down to the level that's lowest possible level and that stops people aspiring to be excellent because everyone tries to be just as good as the, the lowest common denominator basically. You engage in this book, you talk about some stuff in a, in a and I don't know if it was uh, done with a purpose, uh, some of it comes across very witty, um, but one of the things that you do touch on is that we've almost tuned out to corruption. We've we tuned out to crime, to poverty, and, and your book almost, I reckon, will start a debate around a coffee table or when a group of people start talking about the things that we were not able to talk, your book could start that debate. But I almost feel that we've tuned out as South Africans. Am I wrong? Um, no, I don't think you're wrong. I think that is a big problem in South Africa. Um, it's a kind of 
you know, the Soviet Russia, uh, or Soviet Union before it became mm. Russia, mm. Uh, under Stalin had a, a series, a, a time in its history where there was this thing called giganticism. They did things on such a scale that was so monumental that uh, today it's quite difficult to understand how they built these things, dams and rivers and roads and stuff. South Africa seems to have the same kind of problem when it comes to corruption. The, the problems are so big and huge that people can't actually wrap their heads around them. Mm. So, so you wake up the next morning and there's another million or billion or trillion dollar scandal. It's just a number. It's difficult to actually process what it means. There's so much of this stuff. And I, and I think, yeah, people are getting numb to it. Very quickly, the experience you want the reader to take away from this book, what did you hope to impart? Well, I hope people start to think about some of the subjects that are in there in a way they haven't done before. Um, a number of the essays are stories, and I hope that people find them interesting and laugh at them. And uh, then, as you say, I hope it starts a conversation about some of this stuff, uh, because I don't have the answers for everything. Some of them just pose questions, and people can take the mm. conversation further, and I'm sure they have insights that I haven't. So if it, does the, if it achieves those things, that'll be great. Well, just to let people know that the book, in actual fact, just came out. So it's been out a couple of days, literally. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's available in all good bookstores. Go and get it. I guarantee it's going to spark some debate somewhere in some pocket of the country. Columnist and author Gareth van Onseland uh, talking to us about holy cows, the ambiguities of being South African. He talks about South African issues. And I do think at some point, I suspect you're going to be traveling the country talking about this book and hopefully it will start questions around uh, crime initiation how we even view our politics in this country okay let's take an ad break we're back after this okay we're not going to an ad break i'm going somewhere else let's go to the performance called old man Lebo will do the interview afterwards santiago if i cannot fish with you i would like to help you in some way you brought me a beer <laughs> You're already a man. How old was I when you first put me out in the boat? Oh, five. And you nearly were killed when I brought that fish in too green. Ah, and you nearly tore the boat to pieces. I remember the tail slapping and banging on you, throwing me into the bar where the wet coil lines were, and feeling the whole boat shiver, and the noise of you clubbing him like chopping a tree down. And the sweet blood smell all over me. <laughs> if you were my boy, I would take you out and gamble. But you are your fathers and your mothers, and you must obey them. I know where I can get four sardines for tomorrow, and their fresh baits. Let me get four fresh ones for you. Thank you. Tomorrow is going to be a good day on this current. I will go far out. I want to be out before it is light. I will get the sardines for tomorrow. Will you sit in the sun a while? How would you like to see me bring one in that dressed over a thousand pounds? <laughs> Keep warm, old man. Remember, we are in September. Uh, the month where the great fish comes. <laughs> Tell me about the baseball. Bah, in the American leagues, it is the Yankees, as I said. They lost today. Does no matter. The great Damaggio is himself again. Mm. There are other men on the team. Naturally. But he makes the difference. Mm. Yes. I would like to take the great Damaggio fishing. They say his father was a fisherman. Maybe he was as poor as we are. And he would understand. The great ceaseless father was mm. never poor. And he, the father, he was playing in the big leagues when he was my age. When I was your age, I was before the mast on a squared ship that sailed to Africa. I've seen lions on the beach in the evening. <sighs> DiMaggio is the best baseball player. Yeah. And the best fisherman is you. No, 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 no. There are others better. Mm, there are some good fishermen and some great ones. <laughs> but there is only you. Thank you. You make me happy. <laughs> I hope no fish comes along so great that you prove us both wrong. Uh, there is no such fish if you are still as strong as you say. <laughs> I'm not as strong as I think, but I have many tricks. And I have resolution. Yes. You must get some rest, old man, so you will be fresh in the morning. <sighs> Sleep well. Ah, I'll wake you in the morning. 